Hello, everybody. My name is Hussein Jirde, and I'm an engineer at Google. My talk today will be covering next third parties and the work we've been doing to optimize third party loading in Next.js. To give you all some context of the work that we do, I work in a team called Chrome Aurora. And our mission is to advance the web framework ecosystem by introducing better tooling and improved defaults to popular JavaScript frameworks and libraries. Like Guillermo mentioned at the keynote, we've been collaborating with the Next.js team for years. And we share many common objectives, including trying to introduce utilities and automatic optimizations to enhance the developer and user experience of Next.js. We've helped ship multiple utilities in the past number of years, including the Next.js image component, which is used in more than half of all Next.js sites, the Next font utility, which is used in about 15% of all Next.js sites, and even the Next.js script component, which is used in about 15% of Next.js sites as well. For today's talk, however, we'll discuss the script component in particular and the work we've been doing for the past while to leverage and extend it to make loading third-party resources easier and faster. OK, so what's a third-party resource? The HTTP Web Almanac defines a third party as an entity outside the primary site user relationship. It involves the aspects of the site not directly within the control of the site owner, but with their approval. And third parties come in all shapes and sizes, from ads, analytics, to content embeds, chat widgets, marketing, and the list goes on and on and on. The third party ecosystem is a massive one that makes so many developers' lives easier by not having to reinvent so many common use cases. One thing that my team tries to do quite often is get some data on overall trends in, web framework, in the web framework ecosystem. I recently wanted to find out how many third-party resources do Next.js sites typically load. This data is also from HTTP Archive, and we're looking at a sample size of about 160,000 Next.js sites. You can see here that over 94% of Next.js sites load at least one third-party resource. This drops to about 67% that load at least five third-party resources, which is still quite the majority. And the number goes on and on and lower and lower. If you look at the end of the chart, we see that 2% of Next.js sites load more than 50 third-party resources. Now, 2% might seem like a small number, but this is more than 3,000 sites. Now, you can imagine the type of sites that have this many third-party resources. They're likely massive websites with a ton of complex features. And for many companies, there may be marketing or business requirements that may require the inclusion of so many third parties. Digging in a little deeper, I wanted to see if we could correlate the number of third parties that load in Next.js with overall site performance. We could start with largest contentful paint which is a useful metric that measures the time it takes to render the largest image or text block in the viewport. After a good deal of research, we determined that a good LCP score is 2.5 seconds or less. OK, so how does the number of third parties that load in Next.js sites relate to LCP? Again, we're looking at the same sample size here. You can see for sites that load at least a single third-party resource, a very significant chunk has a good LCP score, about 39%. But when we filter the subset down to sites that load at least five third-party resources, the number goes down. And then with 10, it goes down, and so forth. During the keynote, Guillermo shared some amazing work that the Next.js team is doing to make LCP scores even better, things like partial pre-rendering, streaming, and so forth. But what I want to highlight for this talk is the impact third-party resources can make on metrics like LCP. Let's look at another performance metric, interactions to next paint, which measures responsiveness by calculating all click, tap, and keyboard interaction latencies. 
a good IMP score is 200 milliseconds or less. We see a very similar looking chart when we try to correlate the number of third parties that load with INP. Next to the sites that load more third parties have poorer performance when it comes to responsiveness. Now, it's very important to mention that correlation does not necessarily mean causation. We can't just look at the previous charts we, say, we saw and say for a fact that the decline in performance was due to third parties. However, when we couple that data with the many studies that have shown in the past, that we've done in the past, it becomes clear that third party resources have a significant negative impact on user experience. To try and look at this from a different perspective, we can also run some local tests. I did this with ShadCN's taxonomy website. Also, quick shout out to ShadCN and some of the incredible work he's been doing in the Next.js ecosystem. Yeah, round of applause. The reason why I picked this website was A, it's open source, and B, it was actually a nice representative example of a Next.js site with many routes and tons of functionality. The nice thing, too, was that it didn't include any third-party resources. So I wanted to see what would happen if I tried to include some or 10 of the more popular third-party scripts. When I did that, I found the total blocking time of the site to increase 65 times. Now, total blocking time measures how long the main thread was blocked between first contentful paint and when the site becomes interactive. It's a really useful proxy to assess how responsive the page is going to be to user interactions. And you can see how easy it is to just have your main thread blocked when you include third-party scripts. If we take a step back and look at this from a higher level, we can sort of see that there's two problems here. All the data we've seen so far show that there's a serious user experience problem that developers run into when they load more third parties in their application. But there's also a developer experience problem. A lot of developers don't necessarily know how to load popular third-party scripts. And when they do so, they don't know how to handle the performance issues or even add new custom functionality. Here are some anecdotal evidences, actually. And these are some things we see pop up all the time on sites like Stack Overflow. Next.js developers often struggle with the performance impact of third parties. This individual here just talks about how they've included Google Tag Manager in their Next.js site, and their Lighthouse score came down to 38. And this really is a cry for help. Here's another very similar example, but on GitHub. And this person says pretty much the same thing. Google Tag Manager is slowing down my Lighthouse score, and I don't know what else I can do to improve it. And we also see some very similar things, but from a developer experience angle. I found an article quite recently when I was trying to see what developers do to try and load Google Tag Manager in the Next.js apps. And this person looked at the documentation for GTM, completely decided not to follow it, because developers try to find an idiomatic approach to including third parties. They opted to use an entirely separate open source library, which is or may not be maintained anymore. So what's the solution? I think a very good question would be, instead of trying to introduce framework utilities, why can't third parties improve the performance at the source? And for some third parties, this may be possible, right? But this can take years. A lot of these third party resources are used by the vast majority of the web. Any incremental improvement to user experience could take a very, very long time. And for the developer experience angle, why can't we expect the third party providers to build the framework utilities themselves? Why can't they build a React utility, or an Angular utility, or a Next.js utility, and so forth? Although this would be nice, it's not also very realistic. The framework ecosystem changes so frequently that it's just a lot easier for third party providers to build a one size fits all solution. When we built a script component years ago, we wanted to make it easier to load third-party scripts fast and efficiently. 
The default experience of the script component in Next.js is to load after some or all of your application hydrates. But we also included a strategy property to give developers some fine-grained control on when to load a third-party resource. You can decide to load it before hydration happens, after hydration happens, or even during browser idle time using the value lazy on load. But it may be easy to use for like a single, single script. But let's say we wanted to try to use a script component to fetch Google Tag Manager. We look at the Google Tag Manager documentation, figure out, OK, we need to include this big inline script, try to understand how to do so with the script component, get that working. And then there's more that we also have issues with. What's the best loading strategy to use? Do we just stick with the default approach? Or do we even decide to switch it up and do something slightly different? And there's other questions as well. Should this be placed in a layout, component, or page? How do you even try to send custom events? I'm using Google Tag Manager as an example here, but this pattern will apply to any popular third party. And for many, like Google Tag Manager, the majority of Next.js applications use them. So one thing we decided to do is what if we can build on top of the script component to introduce a separate standalone library that makes this process a lot easier. Instead of trying to figure out all those details yourself, what if you could just import a Google Tag Manager component and automatically know that it's going to load in the most performant manner? What's happening behind the scenes is nothing new or magical. It's using the script component, but we're doing the research to figure out when to load it for you so you don't have to think about that yourself. And what if you were like, OK, I want to try to send an event with Google Tag Manager? We created a little function, a little utility for you to send events as well. We also tried rolling out a YouTube embed component. If you wanted to include a YouTube embed and try to do it with the script component, you might realize the script component is specific for scripts, right? But we could do this a bit further and think about ways to make even embeds or style sheet or any other third party resource easier for you. And again, we could take advantage here of not only making the developer experience easier for you, but we can also figure out what's the most optimal way to load it. Instead of relying on the typical YouTube embed, we decided to use a light YouTube embed to load that much faster. And we did the same for Google Maps Embed. And you're starting to see a pattern here. We're making the developer experience easy for you, but we're taking care of the performance concerns for you. A lot of the times, Google Maps are just loaded automatically when they don't need to be. So we're like, why don't we just lazy load them below the device viewport so it doesn't block any critical resources that load the page. Next third parties is still under active development, but we would love your feedback. It's still very early stages. We've only launched those three resources, but we have a lot more plans to include future third parties in the near future. So send us your feedback. The more that we hear, the more useful it's going to be. And here's the link to the documentation. Take a look. Feel free to also comment and give feedback there. The more people that use this, the more we realize, the more that we know what to do and what performance issues that we can actually fix and overcome. Thank you. <laughs>